So hopefully you had a chance to read this section of the text. And I wanted to walk through a few things with you, especially with all these vocab words. Now, they're probably words that you've heard of before. It's not the first time you're hearing of protons, neutrons, electrons, at least I hope, right? And so we know that atoms are the smallest particle of matter that have the characteristics of that type of matter, but yet atoms can be broken down into protons that are positive, neutrons are neutral, and electrons are negative. And we know maybe from former science classes that the protons and the neutrons are both found in the nucleus. So here's my nucleus in this picture with the protons and the neutrons. And the electrons are found in this electron cloud. And the electron cloud is just the space around the nucleus. And it's actually the most exciting part of the atom. And, and it's the part that we'll study most for the rest of this unit. I mean, obviously, nuclear reactions are pretty amazing, too. But we can't do any nuclear reactions in our lab, unfortunately. Chemical reactions involve changes in the electron structure. So we'll really focus on cleaning up our model of the electron cloud. And maybe from a former science class, you were told that there's like rings or shells and, and the electrons fly around the nucleus. And, and we want to maybe dive into that a little bit more and, and see how accurate that really is, right? So now you might also remember from a former science class that atoms are neutral. So maybe we should put that in here somewhere. Atoms are neutral. Overall neutral. So when I look at the composition of an atom, we've got the protons that are positive, the neutrons are neutral or no charge, and the electrons are negative. So in order for the overall atom to be neutral, we need to have the same number of protons and electrons. Same number of protons and electrons. And so it's showing us here like a symbol for a proton. Sometimes we just use this P with a plus sign. Charge of plus one. And then over here I've got kind of the symbol for the electron, E with a little negative charge of minus one and we'll worry about the mass in a little bit. Neutrons are usually symbolized with a little n and a zero. Neutrons are neutral, no charge. So this is a model of a carbon atom. Diamonds are just really organized arrays of carbon atoms. They're kind of in this like really cool tetrahedral structure we say. It's like almost crystalline. Very organized form of carbon atoms as opposed to things like charcoal, which is carbon atoms, but they're all just kind of randomly clumped together. And so if I really kind of look closely at this model, I think I see one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm hoping that I'm, I'm counting six little green protons. Six protons. And uh, the electrons aren't really being shown here. They're trying to just show us that there's an electron cloud, which is great. Uh, but hopefully somewhere in the electron cloud, I would find like one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. I'll just say there's six. To make the atom overall electronically neutral. Now, the neutrons are also in the nucleus, and if I count these kind of bluish-purple neutrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, looks like there's also six neutrons, neutral neutrons, which is fine. The number of protons and electrons have to be the same in a neutral atom. The neutrons can be the same, like in the case of a carbon atom, many carbon atoms do have six neutrons, but you could also have a few extra neutrons or a few less neutrons. That does not change the fact that the atom would be neutral. The purpose of neutrons is to add mass and stability to the atom. And stability in the fact that, think about a nucleus. You've got a whole bunch of positive protons packed kind of tight together. Last time I checked, 
like charges repel. So that could be problematic for the nucleus, right? I've got all these positive charges packed really close to each other. So one of the reasons why we need neutrons is to kind of like break apart the positive protons and kind of like get in between them so they don't fight so much. Now when we do nuclear energy later on this year, then we'll kind of look at other reasons why we need neutrons and why they add stability to the nucleus. But for now, it's okay if I have the same number of neutrons. It would also be okay if the number of neutrons varied a little bit. Okay, so now we get to this mass thing. So we use this unit. Now they're kind of showing it in here. Bloop. AMU. It stands for Atomic Mass Unit. AMU stands for Atomic Mass Unit. Oh, there it is. Here it is. An Atomic Mass Unit. An AMU. It's a unit used to describe the mass of, of these tiny particles. And it's not a gram. And it would be crazy to say that like a proton weighs a gram. That's nuts, right? And a gram is like a paper clip. And a paper clip is made of billions and billions and billions of atoms that all have lots of protons. But we use this term 1 AMU to describe the mass of a proton, which is the same as the mass of a neutron. So protons and neutrons both found in the nucleus, and they really carry the same amount of mass. But now if you look at the electron, the mass is really, really tiny. And really for most purposes, we just kind of say that the mass of an electron is, is negligible. It does not contribute much to the overall mass of an atom. Often we don't even count it because it's like immeasurable, super, super tiny. Okay, so does this ring a bell? Like, do you remember atoms from a former science class? I mean, they haven't changed a whole lot. And we're gonna dive a little deeper into the structure of the atom, especially the electron cloud, but I don't know that anything you would have learned in a former class is necessarily wrong. I think we can just make it better. So there's a question here, a cross-cutting concept. Uh, this is gonna look at the mass and volume of an atom. Which subatomic particle, and subatomic just refers to the particles that make up the atom, protons, neutrons, electrons. Which subatomic particles account for most of an atom's mass and volume? Okay, so kind of a tricky question, because we're going to break this apart into mass and volume. So hopefully you kind of looked back at this model to say, okay, well, where's most of the mass coming from? Well, the mass are these AMUs. It's the protons and the neutrons found in the nucleus. But the volume is like the space occupied by the atom. And if you kind of look at this model, what do you think takes up more space, the nucleus or the electron cloud? And hopefully you're saying the electron cloud? So these kind of need to be broken apart a little bit. Most of the mass comes from the nucleus. It would be the protons plus the neutrons. That together makes up the atomic mass. But most of the volume in an atom comes from the electron cloud. There was a study done that tried to compare like the scale of, of the nucleus to the rest of the atom. And comparatively, it was that the nucleus is about the size of a marble in the middle of an NFL football stadium where the rest of the stadium is like the electron cloud and the nucleus is like a marble in the middle of the stadium, which really shows you how much volume, how much space is occupied by the electron cloud, even though like 99.999% of the mass comes from the nucleus. 